Jeremy, how you doing, man? Aren't you in Lynchburg? Feel free to share this video over and over and over again. Let folks know that um, you know that we are having this discussion as well. Um, yeah, yeah, y'all come on in, come on in, come on in. Just take one second, stay right there. All right. Your volume was all the way up when I clicked on the link. That's what I'm talking about. It's too loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there was a blog that I wrote um, a couple years ago that I wanted to read some excerpts from, and you can feel free to share it as you wish. Um, but is it too loud in your church? So uh, I want to just start the conversation off by reading from this blog, and then I'll publish it later. My dear Aunt Helen said to me last week that she has to stand in the lobby of her church when the music and the preaching is going on because she says it's too loud for her in the sanctuary. I was singing with my group this past weekend at a church where I serve, and my wife comes in the sanctuary and waves at me to inform me that it's too loud. So I immediately told the house guy to bring the overall volume of the house down, which was the right thing to do, since I could not assess from where I was standing if there was any one particular thing peeking out in the audience. All of us have our opinions as to when something is too loud or not, and all of us think we're right. So I'm going to approach this from a technical perspective later on in this broadcast. It's a fact that listening to loud music for long periods of time can and will damage your hearing. Many of you seeing this go to church on a regular basis, and most of our churches are probably projecting our at sound systems at high levels, not realizing that our hearing is being damaged in the process. I, for one, am very guilty, as I am, as I am saying these to you right now, of, de of demanding more volume as I play or sing on Sunday morning due to the intensity of the music that I sing and or play, partly because I have trouble hearing myself. Gospel music is demanding, and when the energy comes, so does the loudness. When preachers, especially in the black church, get excited and raise their voices, they tend to get closer to the mic instead of backing away from it because of the excitement and intensity of their preaching. And they like to hear themselves. That's a normal thing. But it can be harmful as well if the sound tech at your church does not take the necessary steps to control the volume. Many of our churches do not invest in people who have the knowledge to run audio equipment efficiently, but we are quick to hire people to do other jobs in other church in our churches, which, requ which require competency. Audio engineering is a skill which requires a lot of training. It's amazing to me that we entrust our ears to deacon and trustee so-and-so on the soundboard. Are we that ignorant? Whether you are in a small or a large church, we must protect our ears while being able to hear everything we want to hear at the same time. Technically, anything above 75 decibels is considered loud and anything above 100 decibels is getting dangerous for long periods of time. If the noise gets to 200 decibels for any amount of time, then loss of hearing takes place immediately. It is true that all of us have our own noise thresholds. It's not too loud all of the time. Let's be honest. Some of us make those claims partly due to the fact that we don't necessarily enjoy the type of noise being made, whether it's music or the preached word. 
I remember growing up in church and every time I played a gospel song, it was too loud. But every time I would play a hymn at the same volume, it was heavenly. The same old saints were talking out of two sides of their mouths. It is possible to be intense and for the levels to be controlled at the same time. It's not always the musician's fault if the music is too loud. Your church might have an incompetent sound technician, especially if your church has everything mic'd up. Your instruments might be placed incorrectly in the sanctuary. There are a number of reasons why things may be too loud in your church. Stop assuming and seek answers that make sense to the church and to the musicians. On the other hand, musicians should try to exercise some wisdom when dealing with their own volume levels in church, especially if you are in total control of your volume. We must not let our personal likings overshadow what may or may not be going on in our houses of worship. We must seek and implement solutions because there are millions of Christians who may be suffering from hearing loss due to the Saturday or Sunday morning worship experience. I have posted a table. I'm sorry. I will post a table of what uh, is considered too loud um, on this broadcast a little later. But I just want to read to you a blog that I did a couple of years ago. And you can make your own decisions about what's going on in your own house of worship Please feel free to share this video or broadcast to, to all who may need to hear it. God bless you and have a great day.